Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, April 5th. So today we have the moon in Gemini all day. And of course, this puts us in our mental plane. We are looking for mental stimulation. We are open. We are curious. We're jumping from one interest to the next. Puts us in a very good position to be a little bit more chatty, a little bit more communicative. And of course, we are starting to put the pieces together. We're gaining information. We're asking the right questions. We are finding the answers, the details, the information needed in order to make an informed decision. What are we making an informed decision on? Well, these new beginnings, this new mission, this new project, this new path that we are definitely preparing to walk. But of course, many of us need to put the pieces together in our mental plane, really got to see the details emerge, how the puzzle pieces are connecting. We have to be a little bit more informed than we currently are in order to make such a commitment. So today we also have Venus moving into Pisces. If you haven't listened to the astro forecast that I put out about this, you should definitely go check that out. Go into a little bit more depth and detail on what Venus being in Pisces energy is going to mean for us for the next month-ish. And of course, any time that we are shifting out of one energy and into the other, we feel that. We feel it in our heart space. We feel it in our head space. We see it in our physical realms. There is going to be a little bit of an adjustment period in the wee hours of the day. And then we will be locking into Venus moving into Pisces energy around midday. Again, Eastern Standard Time. It's a semi-quiet day here today, although the energy blasts are still coming in from the cosmos, and we do have a major aspect between Jupiter and Saturn. For the most part, we are trying to keep things a little bit simple. You know, in true eerie season fashion, we want to keep things simple, keep things basic, really put the blinders on, just deal with one thing at a time. It's going to be a little bit hard to focus on one thing at a time because, of course, that moon and Gemini has us jumping all around with tabs open in our hearts and in our head. So we are going to have to kind of go with the flow and try our best to really kind of fixate on one thing at a time, absorbing the absolute most detail from every situation, from every relationship dynamic, from every conversation. We are highly intuitive. We are very observant and it's going to work in our favor. So early on, we have the moon making a semi-square with Mercury. Mercury, of course, rules over Gemini energy. So this is going to be an effort to see where it is that our heart and our head is not on the same page. Semi-square is a little bit of a tension point. Of course, the moon in Gemini definitely wanting to open up to new emotions, new perspectives, new understandings, new elements in our lives. And Mercury over there in Aries energy, wrapping up its last week of life lessons in Aries energy, just wants to focus on one thing, wants to make a decision, wants to make a commitment, wants to speak out, blurt out, just get the energy out of our heart space and out of our head space. So what we need to remember here is that we have Gemini energy, which is air. We have Aries energy, which is fire. I'm going to take you back to the campfire analogy. If you have balanced air and balanced fire, that fire is going to keep up a steady pace. That is what we want to do. We want to energy manage this fire so that we have a constant. We have a reliable fire. We have a balanced fire energy to keep us warm, to keep things illuminated. If we put too much air, meaning too much thought, too much mental stimulation in our inner realm, we are going to fan those flames into a restless anxiety, impulsive state of just wanting to kind of explode and get our inner energy out of our physical bodies. And if we are lacking that oxygen, 
lacking those thoughts, lacking that logic and practicality, uh, we have too much fire. And when we have too much fire, that fire will burn itself out. And again, that is one of the greatest disadvantages of Aries energy is that we burn ourselves out. We burn our mental plane out. We, we exhaust our emotions. We can't keep up with our physical energy. We don't get anything done. We're just kind of, you know, running around willy nilly, not giving this energy a direction, a purpose, a meaning, a mission. And so, you know, we can just either create drama or create a mess for ourselves, or we could just, you know, be out there spitting verbal vomit just for the sake of getting this energy out. It is a little bit activating. It is a bit irritating. We do have to balance our thoughts with our emotions. The moon is going to bump into Jupiter in a very harmonious way. This is going to help us really put into focus what it is that we need to grow past. Jupiter, of course, is about growth and expansion. He's in Pisces energy. So this is about emotional healing. This is about our intuition, our spiritual practice. This is about having a deeper understanding of some of the tough love lessons that we just went through, plucking out the silver linings, making sense of all of this. And of course, the moon in Gemini is very curious. We we want to sort out our thoughts, we want to sort out our feelings, and giving us a little bit of a magnifying glass that Jupiter offers us, we get to kind of hone in on some of these details that we might have missed. So we are kind of putting the pieces together, we are listening to our intuition, we are listening to our lower level intellect and logic and practicality. So there is this little burst that happens when we blend our higher self, our intuition with our logical, practical mindset. And having this aha moment, having this epiphany is not only going to change our view, our perspective and understanding of events gone by, but it gives us a totally different position to operate from in kind of putting the plan together and how it is that we're going to move forward and grow through what it is that we're going through. The moon helps us out as well by bumping into Neptune, also in Pisces, in a very harmonious way. This, again, the moon in Gemini energy is our logical, practical, lower intellect. We're trying to sort through our emotions. We're trying to make sense of them. We're trying to sort through the details of our mental plane and really get our heart and our head on the same page. Neptune energy is our higher selves. It's our intuition. It is our dreams. It is our creative force. It is the higher intuitive gut feelings that we bring in from our higher selves, from the higher cosmos. We bring it into the physical body. This being a positive aspect even speaks even truer about the realizations that we're having, not only because we're trusting our gut and making sense of trusting our gut through our logical, practical mind space, but we are very strong in what it is that we feel pulled to pursue, what it is that we are aligning with as far as our future dreams and visions are concerned, and we're making logical, practical uh, assumptions and um we're making practical sense of the path that we have to take here in this physical realm in order to actually align with the dreams and the visions that we are now excited to pursue. At this point, 1118 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is when Venus moves into Pisces. So again, the Piscean energy is building just because we're in a brand new calendar, just because we are in Aries season, there is a lot of planets in this Piscean energy, a lot of the major heavy hitting planets as well, having Venus, one of the what we call inner planets because it's close to us with a short orbit, which means that it affects our day to day life. Having Venus uh, in Pisces energy is definitely going to turn the volume all the way up on the softer side of life, the dreamy side of life, especially when it comes to our personal relationships. Again, if you didn't listen to me, I think it was yesterday, go on that whole recap rant about, you know, way back in November when Venus went into Capricorn and was preparing to go retrograde and then spent 
a huge amount of time in the underworld, humbling herself, dancing with the god of the underworld, Pluto himself, the great transformer. And then, of course, coming out of retrograde in the beginning of this year and aligning and connecting with the masculine divine energy in Mars under the full moon in Leo in February and then allowing Mars to lead her into Aquarian energy where she came full circle. She woke up and then she detached from that connection in order to find herself, in order to have the space, in order to have the freedom to figure out what it is that she wants to do from here, especially with the personal relationships. And that's why we've been seeing such a uh, dynamic change, uh, not only within ourselves, but in our personal relationships. Venus, like I said, check out the astro forecast. Venus brings a whole different vibe when she's in Pisces. She's actually uh, feeling pretty good about herself in Piscean energy and really going to help us move out of our head space, move into our heart space to provide ourselves with some endings, some closure, some peace, some harmony with some of the uh, relationships that have fallen apart, some of the relationships that still need to fall apart. And of course, we are upping our worth and upping our value within ourselves. And that's why we're seeing the power exchange in our personal relationships and those dynamics shift as well. Later on in the afternoon, literally like three, two, three hours later, we have Mars. Mars, of course, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, even our anger and aggression, if need be. Uh, he's in Aquarian energy, so the surges of our physical energy, they come in fast. We're not able to maintain the kind of I want to say focus, uh, physical energy, determination, it's not constant. And um, having the Aquarian energy, which is like a bolt of lightning, like we get zapped suddenly, we have this energy, we have this focus, we have this passion, we have these intense desires, and then it doesn't really stick around for that long. And then we fall off and we're like, meh, don't have the energy for that. Mars is also playing a game right now in the intellectual battlefield the visionary battlefield and only really exerting physical energy here in this physical realm when A, we get a surge to do so and B, we are gifted an opportunity in our current circumstances to make a move and take an action that will actually get us closer to the new dream and the new vision that we're being downloaded with and that we're being activated and triggered to pursue. So we have Mars squaring, which is a tension point. It's a conflicting point with the true node. And the true node is our destiny point. It is our highest selves, our soul selves saying, hey, need you to get on this path in order for you to complete the mission, in order for me to, you know, reach my fullest potential and express myself fully. And of course, this tension point, this square is a conflict. And right now we're having, um, we're having a little bit of a A ego war versus B, a spiritual war within us. Of course, we're having a spiritual war like on the earth plane and on the higher realms. But this is very much about Mars, who is technically more rooted in our egoic avatar here in this physical realm, being kind of conflicted with the actions that we're now going to have to take in order to align with our higher selves. Of course, we've had Mars and Saturn doing a little bit of a dance. They were conjunct just yesterday. This is pushing us to boss up to our next mission, to our next purpose. There's a lot of karma at play. We feel like it's kind of quote unquote unfair that we're being put in this position to fulfill this mission, to fulfill this purpose, to fulfill this karmic role. But we're slowly building towards recognizing where it is that we have to be practicing practical and responsible um, with this soul contract that we do have to boss up, that we do have to do what is required of us to uh, bring this mission, bring this purpose, bring this path to full completion. So Mars bumping into the true node this way is kind of like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't have the energy for this. I can't focus on this right now. And of course, the true note is over there going, well, you're going to have to do what you got to do because this is a part of your soul mission. This is what you got to do. Like, I don't know what you got to do. Maybe you got to rework a couple of things looking back on how it is that we got here. Maybe you need to kind of rework 
your direction, your determination. Maybe you got to work on your confidence in the here and now, because regardless of what it is that you're thinking and feeling, you have moves to make. You have a soul contract to fulfill. You have a mission. You have a task. You have a purpose that you need to start working on. So we're kind of like feeling this little conflict within us. And then we have a really interesting aspect taking place later on in the day, pretty much when the day is almost over 1125 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have Jupiter and Saturn coming together in not the nicest way that will likely be an activation point in our physical realms that put into perspective where it is that, yes, we're being pushed we're being pushed in our physical circumstances. We're being pushed in our spiritual circumstances where we have to move forward. We have to grow. We have to expand our heart space, our head space. We have to expand on the circumstances, on the ideas, on the mission, on the purpose that we're now being activated to pursue. But then we have Saturn over here, which is about restriction. So just think of an accordion. Jupiter, we are pulling the accordion all the way out at its full ex ex expansion. And then Saturn, we pull that accordion back in. Okay, we're contracting it. We're pushing it back in. And here's the thing. We know where we have to grow. We know where our mission is. We know where we have to kind of push the boundaries of our current circumstances. And then Saturn kicks in with that negative ass narrative and tells us, no, maybe we should just, you know, forget about that whole thing. Maybe we should just talk ourselves out of it. Maybe we should just bring ourselves back in in order to stay in this particular spot in life, in this circumstance. Now, Saturn is also the Lord of Karma. So one would say, well, if we're supposed to be, you know, expanding our horizons, if you will, in order to fulfill a karmic contract, why does Saturn want to keep us in the same spot? Well, first of all, um, we tend to want to stay in the same spot because we don't feel like we're ready and we never feel like we're ready. And if we sat around feeling like we needed to feel ready in order to make the next move, many of us would never do anything. Many of us would never grow. There is a spiritual karmic aspect at play right now where we have to take a leap of faith. Our ego identities are never going to feel ready, are never going to feel prepared, are never going to feel like we're good enough, like we have enough knowledge, like we have enough expertise, like we have enough of whatever it's going to take in order to fulfill this particular role and responsibility. But Saturn needs to push us, needs to make us understand that we have to boss up. We have to boss up. We have to move outside of the paralysis of not feeling ready. We have to feel like we are able to push the boundaries outside of this little zone in which we've created in order to fulfill this karmic destiny that many of us, our higher selves, have been screaming at us for a very long time. Jupiter now is just pushing us outside of our comfort zone to trust ourselves, our higher selves, the universal plan, again, being in Pisces, this is a spiritual growth, a spiritual lesson. And Saturn in Aquarian energy is like, think about the future. Think about the vision. Think about the wants, needs and desires that you have. Think about the reality that you want to live in. Are you brave enough to do something uncomfortable to push yourself outside of your boundaries in order to get what you want? This is why we have to be in a state of paralysis, understanding that we've created this, you know, very restrictive box of our circumstances because Saturn wants to beat us down in a tough love life manner in order for us to boss up in spite of the narrative, in spite of the insecurities, in spite of the doubts, in spite, you know, when somebody tells you that you can't, that's when you muster up that courage and says, mm -mm, I'm going to show you that I can. This is the kind of vibe that we're kind of going with here today. So by the end of the day, we are definitely going to feel that accordion effect. Like we want to grow. We want to move forward. But we're bringing that accordion in. No, maybe I should stay where I'm at. I'm not ready. There's too many variables that I haven't figured out yet. And then we expand again. Oh, but you know what? I trust myself and I trust the universe and I'm being called to do something greater. And then we can we constrict again. That accordion comes in and oh, maybe I'll just sit here until I'm given a, a really good sign by the universe to go ahead to take a leap of faith. So if you're sitting around waiting for your sign, this is it. <laughs>